Hello and welcome to the Surgical Spirit Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Haider Al-Hakim, the Third Eye Doctor. Pull up a chair and get ready for some candid and uncompromising discussion with experts, innovators, agitators, and influential people from every corner of health and well-being. From inside the hospital to at home in the kitchen, we're leaving no stone unturned in our quest to uncover the secrets of healthier, happier, more successful, and less stressful lives. Thank you so much for joining us, and without further ado, let's meet this episode's guest. Hello, Harry. We've we, we've started the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm I'm very well. It, it's bloody cold, and I don't like cold weather. It is cold. Um, it so, is what cold do you do? Cold. What 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 do you do in this situ- situation? It's cold weather. How do you stay superhuman in this cold weather? Yeah, so as you know, I'm all about feeling superhuman, doing the best I can to, to feel superhuman. Um, firstly, very obvious one, so keep the heating on, but mm. get moving as well. I mean, mm. you know, get moving first thing, like yesterday actually, yesterday morning I was luckily, I was in France, I was in Fontainebleau, and I took a walk, and it was so much colder there than it was here. It was like z- freezing. And the woods were so misty, but I realized I hadn't actually been in woods, strange woods by myself for a long, long time. And uh, I, well, I didn't know and I could quite easily get lost. And it was very kind of eerie, kind of imagine like you're in the scene of some sort of horror movie kind of thing. But I went for like a nice two hour long walk, uh, four layers on, still got cold in my hands, even with gloves, hat, scarf, uh, but keeping moving, which is something I talk about obviously a lot when it comes to health and well-being, movement. Uh, it doesn't have to be like a run or an, or a jog or anything. Yeah. But just moving. It's all good. It's all cool, good. Cool, cool. And and you know, movement is is the default really for the body rather than the sitting. So yeah. you know, how much time can you not sit rather than how much time can you move? I think yeah, that's sort ab- of a good. Absolutely. Well, I'm standing right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I need to stand standing up because I'm. Yeah, I mean, I saw that. I bought a standing desk like a couple of years ago and uh, it's been brilliant. Uh, obviously, it's not the solution because you're still in one plane of motion. Yeah. Um, but because you're, you've spent 20, 30 years sitting, at least yeah. you're going to engage different muscles standing than you would be sitting. Um, and it's not to say I stand all day, I sit as well. So. And, and, and this brings us on to your passion for yoga. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I've been doing yoga for like, uh, well, Consistently, I like I say a twice a week practice uh, on average for the last ten years, which pr- primarily I got into because um, I actually had a neck injury uh, years and years ago uh, from something in the gym, and had physio was told that I needed either could either do a surgery, some sort of injection, or physio. So I took the physio, but then the physio ran out after about ten sessions or whatever it was, and I figured, you know what. I'll uh, I'll start doing yoga and I dabbled with yoga before because I used to work night shifts and I realized that I couldn't run on a treadmill after a long night shift because I almost collapsed once and the yoga class was on at 9am and I went to that so I dabbled in it a little bit before and then I just found a good class around 2008 got into it um, and I you know when I look around the streets that you know I see people you know old age people hunched over and mm. things like that and I didn't want to be like that and so I made a commitment that I, you know twice a week I would leave the door leave the office at 5 30 regardless of what people thought about that and uh, for my own self-care and you know 6 till 7 30 would do yoga twice a week um, and then you know now I'm obviously I teach yoga but that's you know part of my offering my main thing is speaking and training on health well-being mindset and resilience but obviously yoga i have a holistic approach to my model of well-being and uh you know movement is part of it yoga is part of it i mean Uh, what is it about yoga that that really attracted it to you um i guess you know i've been doing some level of sport or exercise for 35 odd years now like since i was quite young i've been doing something like either judo or this or the other and I guess for yoga, it was a, a a different style of practice in that it wasn't as I don't know what the word is forceful, impactful, but, yeah, impact. yeah, forceful, impactful, or uh, aggressive, mm. or this that, and the other. Like you know, I did like football, basketball. competitive. Yeah, I mean, you maybe you shouldn't really compete against even yourself. It's just mm-hmm. it, you get to learn your body, you get to kind mm. of 
learn about the breath you get to learn about yeah. how to stay focused i remember when i first started doing yoga you know my mind would always be all over the place thinking mm. about what happened at work thinking about what's going for dinner uh, and it still gets like that sometimes but it's mm. a lot less than it ever was so that's helped me but also as you get older you know we lose that ability to just move mm. sit down and crouch and mm. play with kids on the floor and do things like that and i just I, you know, I didn't want to be like that, and I knew that it's a good compliment. The way I look at yoga is a bit like, imagine a building, uh, a house. Um, I still do lots of other things. Like I'm, uh, Later today, I'm going to go kettlebells, Thai boxing as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I do boxing, kettlebells, circuits, all sorts of stuff. But I always see yoga as being like, if you think of a house, um, the maybe the cement, I guess, that holds everything together, like all the all mm-hmm. the bits. So you mm-hmm. might put all the... You know, the, the foundations might be the basic strength training that you do, the things that you're able to do, and then you start adding on the fancier things like the nice windows and the conservatories, which is maybe your tie box in or your mm-hmm. kettlebells, all that sort of stuff, um, or your football, your basketball. But I think for me, yoga was always going to be like that foundation mm-hmm. that makes all the other things better. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, most people will find that if they play tennis, they'll be better at tennis when they, play, when they do yoga as well. Wow. Wow. You know, if they do... Thai boxing, they'll be better at Thai boxing if they mm. do yoga as well. So it just makes everything else better, if you if you like. And okay. also, it's an ancient philosophy and an ancient um, um, school of thought as well, which 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 does have a foundation in human history. Yeah, I mean, it's what six thousand years old. Although mm. the, the movement style that we see in the West is literally about one hundred and twenty years old. Um, and, and and do you think that's causing a lot of issues in terms of health or wellness you know the new style of movement that the west no, has brought in um no but i just think it's it's very much um representative of say society in general which takes mm. a very reductionist approach mm. to problem solving mm. you know uh you know you're a medic um mm. so in the medicine world where we look at something and we look at something in isolation and we go mm. oh you know, we take even we take an orange and we go, oh, it's the vitamin C that we need. Mm. But actually, there's tons of other interactions within that orange mm. that that enter into your body and, and do things. Mm. And I think we have to our detriment taking this very reductionist approach, which is, you know, yoga means union. Okay, mm. it mm. means yoga. so it's bring everything together. It, uh, yeah, how everything can you find how, how how can you find a really good yoga teacher? You know, I, I wrote a blog post once years ago about uh, something about Beginner's Guide to Yoga. And, and whenever I talk about yoga teachers and, and yoga to new people, I always say this. You know, go to several different teachers, mm. several different studios and several different styles. Mm. Because otherwise it's like going to the movies once, seeing a movie and saying, well, I don't like that movie, which means I don't like any movie. Mm. But actually, you're going to try different cinemas you're going to try um, different types genres of genres and genres, yeah. all of that. And then yeah. you'll say, okay, I like that kind of movie. Mm. Okay. Mm. And I say the same thing with yoga is try lots of different teachers, uh, lots of different styles, and then find one that kind of fits, fits to you. And as your practice develops, your, uh, your criteria for a teacher will, will develop as mm. well. And you'll start to try different teachers. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And, and this brings us on to, um, you know, all these different gurus, because I mean, you're a guru yourself. And yet there's so many gurus on the internet and on YouTube and sort of out there, you know, how can we find the real guru from the fake? Uh, well, firstly, I'm not sure I like the term guru anyway. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a student first, and then um, I like to pass on what I learn to other people. So I guess I would be a teacher second. But you know, obviously, once you get it, you, you'll realize that you're your own guru, you know, mm. um, that you, you're going to teach yourself things. If you're looking for real gurus, I would say look at babies. Babies wow. are my teachers. You wow. know, they, they t- teach you how to breathe. They teach you how to sit. They teach you how to forgive. They ha- teach you how to live in the moment. Mm. They teach you how to not be attached to things too much. Mm. They teach you how to, you know, uh, smile and laugh. Wow. Um, so if you want a guru, look at a child. Wow. Um, how far, I mean, in, in terms of the age, are we looking at sort of up to one-year-olds, two-year-olds, three-year-olds? Yeah, that kind of age, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, you know, until they get conditioned by parents and school yeah, and culture and religion and sort of society. Age. But even still then, there's a, there's a certain element. But, yeah, up to about age four. 
they're they're pretty good teachers. Uh, four so we five. can argue that you know the more the more the more childlike we are, the more toddler like we are, the more we're in tune with our yeah. I mean, power. when you think about like um, meditation, meditation is is often not about getting no thoughts, but it is about kind of releasing the thoughts that come in. Um, but we try to get to this clear mind perspective. But actually, that's kind of the area that we were when we were born. Mm. Yeah, when we were born, we were kind of born with this empty mind. And then lots of crap comes into it. And through meditation, we're trying to get back to that state. So, you know, we kind of had all the answers uh, intuitively when we were children. And uh, we lose that through various you know, experiences, conditioning, people, places, and all of that that influences our lives, which is, you know, it's not good or bad. It just is. And if you can learn to get a bit more in touch with your body, your breath, your mind. Um, mm. You'll start to be able to sift out the kind of the fake gurus from the real gurus if you are looking for a teacher. Mm. Um, you know, ask yourself, you know, are they living what they preach? Now, mm. you know, I don't preach what I do 100% of the time because it's unrealistic, the things that I do to do them 100% of the time. But, you know, people will get an intuitive sense for, for whether someone is, you know, bullshitting them mm. or or not. We've got quite high BS radars. Mm. And I think trust in your gut about things, you know, mm. does, does that person have a reputation from people you trust as well yeah. that you already know uh, is a good way to look at it. Um, what's in it for them? I mean, obviously, you know, if, you're, if your profession is teaching people, you, you want to make money. You need to, yeah. if you can't maintain the monetary side you can't maintain the message either yeah so i wouldn't say that oh gurus have to be like you know people that aren't interested in money and yeah. aren't interested in all this because i don't think that's true no. um but what i do think is that you should find someone that um resonates with you yeah. that's got something to teach you is is humble in their own like philosophies as well maybe yeah. that they they could be wrong you know yeah. with with some of their stuff there's no real absolute truth I, as far as i currently believe it to be yeah um you know and also know that their way is not necessarily going to be the only way and it's and it might be just what's worked for them yeah uh, what i do certainly has worked for me and worked for many people that i speak with and coach and train um and yet there may be things that don't work for other people and you know i say for example diet yeah that actually listening to your body is a good idea when it comes to diet a lot of the time mm -hmm. however you have to go for a training period first because if you're listening to your body right now and your body is telling you McDonald's, Snickers bar, this and the other, it's because it's been conditioned that way. But once mm. you kind of get through that and you start to uh, peel that away, then actually, you know, not getting into any kind of diet, religions or philosophies, mm. just listening to your body and saying, well, actually right now I do feel like having a bit of egg. Uh, right mm. now my body feels like it needs some chips or crisps yeah. and that's fine because yeah. that's you know maybe it's, it needs the carbs maybe it needs the salt maybe it needs the protein or the fat you know and listening to your body then is a good thing so yeah. Being, yeah. getting back in tune with yourself is, is and you'll find out that you're your own guru yeah I mean you know you sort of got all the answers inside and it's about listening carefully and um, tuning in and introspecting inside of you um, now, now given that you're superhuman super Harry um, what are your kryptonites? Well, um, firstly, I would say that we're all superhuman. Yeah, we've right. all got to just unlock our own inner superpowers. And, and like I say, you know, as well as being superhuman, I'm human. And, and when I mean superhuman, I don't mean like special powers or anything. I just mean um, that actually you're living at a superior level to maybe the average person walking down the street or the superior version of you. Uh, you are your best day, basically. Mm -hmm. But rather than that best day happening once in a while, it's happening, you know, seven, eight, maybe nine days out of ten, yeah. rather than, you know, it probably won't have in ten days out of ten. Sure. Um, but in terms of kryptonite, I mean, there's a few. We're talking about food for sure. It's things like pop chips, crisps, your uh, <laughs> chips. You'll always see me kind of vying for chips and crisps and things like that. Um, I'm also partial to a little bit of uh, nice quality vegan organic chocolate. Um, yeah. I love all that stuff. Uh, so an on bar or two will definitely find its way into my diet from time to time. Um, you know, um, I'd say, I suppose from a work perspective, and maybe people can relate to this, it's um, it's poss possibly spreading myself too thin yeah. with, with um, rather than like zeroing in on one specific field. Now I know in medicine, as many of your listeners might well be in medical fields, 
that's kind of ingrained into you. You kind of go through that specialism, and that's probably why, if I were to be a doctor, I'd probably end up being a GP or something yeah. like that, mm-hmm. or some sort of integrative, holistic. You'd be GP. a very good GP, actually. You'd be, you'd, oh, you'd thank be an you. awesome GP. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, because I'm just like interested in lots of different yeah. things, and I, mm-hmm. I've always found it a struggle to kind of niche down. Even when I was at school, you know, I'd be quite good at basketball and football and athletics. And all of that, but I wouldn't be. Excellent. You want to know everything. You want to know yeah, everything. Yeah, but I wouldn't be excellent at any one thing. And and I guess to my detriment, that means that I haven't specialised in certain ways. But to my benefit, it means that when I've looked at say my health model, yeah, uh, which people can find about on, on one of my websites, it's is actually it looks at the whole picture. Okay, yeah. so it's not just looking at oh, I'm movement specialist. It's all about exercise, or yeah. I'm the diet yeah. person. It's all yeah. about this, or I'm the meditation expert. It's all about this. Actually, the leadership beat model, which is the philosophy that I've got on, on my website, harrykalimnios.com, you can see there's a, there's a picture there, and it's got everything in there that yeah. I've seen over seven, eight, ten years of the studying this stuff, where I've looked at different experts, and I've pieced together the four main areas, and then the subsets within that of what goes into healthy, well-being, uh, people who want that superhuman energy level. So Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, you know, check this guy out. This guy knows tons of stuff. He's also a mathematician, so he's um, very, very clever. Clever. Uh, than... Yeah, I did maths daily, but I did physics and astrophysics. At, um, astrophysics, in... even yeah, worse. University, university. <laughs> yeah. um, but that was a while back. So we're coming towards the end of the podcast. Uh, I want three of your best hacks for our listeners. Okay. Um, I'll give you those three hacks in one hack. Okay. Now, you are high-performance people, yeah? You're medical professionals, you're professionals, and, uh, and also studying medicine, you probably have had lots of acronyms, right, that you had to learn to remember things. So I'm going to give you another acronym, but many of you like high-performance vehicles, you like high-performance living, so think of a high-performance vehicle, and the one I'm thinking of is BMW. And the reason I'm thinking of it is for a very specific reason, because if we're thinking about three things that you can do to become a high performance person in your life, then first thing that you should do, first thing in the morning is this idea of a BMW and also throughout the day. Now the B stands for breathing. Great. Okay. So take some proper deep diaphragmatic breaths, maybe 10 powerful deep breaths in the morning and continue to breathe diaphragmatically throughout the day. So breathing. The M stands for movement, yeah. okay? So make sure that even if it's not your main exercise of the day, and rarely is it mine in the morning, but moving five, 10 minutes, yeah? First thing in the morning, yeah? Whether that's me, like me jumping on a rebounder, like a mini trampoline for five, 10 minutes, um, or just doing some stretching, or some lunges, or some jumping jacks, or whatever it is, doesn't have to be your main workout. This yeah. is just to get you moving. Uh, And then W stands for water, okay? Most of the time people reach for their phone or a coffee first thing in the morning, yeah. Having about, well, depending on your size and everything, but I would go for half a litre of water first thing in the morning, if not more. Uh, Before you reach for coffee, before you reach for tea, before you reach for anything, you're either gonna reach to hug your partner or you're gonna reach for that glass of water. Um, Have have both, I guess, have both. Yeah. Have both, both of you have the water, yeah? So, you know, we often think about having an outer bath, and as my, uh, the, the podcast, one of the podcasts I like listening to, Sean Stevenson's Model Health Show, he always says, think about having an inner bath, mm. okay? So having mm. an inner bath, nice. okay? Flushing nice. everything out. So I normally start with, like, some warm water, like a third hot water and two-thirds cold water, and I have a glass of that, or two first thing, then I have some normal water, I have some hot water and lemon, uh, right now, I'm having some herbal tea. You see me with smoothies. I'm Mate, a, you're a fully juice. hydrated. You're, you're, exactly. you're always on. <laughs> so, so BMW uh, as three tips, breathing, movement, and water. Wonderful, Harry. It's, it's been a great pleasure. How, how can people get hold of you? Um, the best way would be via my main website. Now, my name's spelled a bit weird. It's Harry Kalimnios. So that's H-A-R-I-K-A-L-Y-M-N-I-O-S.com or Another way is you look up Harry, H-A-R-I, into Google, along with the words, the thought, as in thinking, gym. Mm -hmm. So if you go Harry, the thought, gym, uh, in Google, you'll find thethoughtgym.com, you'll find harrykalimnios.com, you'll find my YouTube channels, you'll find Instagram, you'll find Twitter. um, But I'm on social media, the thought, gym. Um, uh, But if you want to know about the Leadership Beat Model, the blogs, all the blogs are on harrykalimnios.com. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much, Harry. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Thanks for listening to this installment of the Surgical Spirit podcast. For all the latest in the world of Surgical Spirit, don't forget to follow on Twitter at The Third Eye Doc and catch me on Facebook at the page The Third Eye Doctor. You can visit the website at www.thethirdeyedoctor.co.uk for more information on the work that I do. And please send us feedback and questions and suggestions for the podcast. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. I've been Dr. Haida Al-Hakim, and I'll see you next time.